A scorching good afternoon to you from the wonderfully humid streets of Bangkok. Originally, I hadn't planned on making a video about this flight, but then I saw that they were Skytrax's sixth best leisure airline in the world. Well then, it seemed like something that needed to be shared. Just to be clear, because I myself see something different every time I look at the name, this is a review of the very small and new airline Viet Travel Airlines. Not Vietjet or Vietnam Airlines. It seems the aviation industry in Vietnam has a bit of a theme going on. Bangkok has two commercial airports, Don Mung to the northwest and Suanapum to the east. We are heading to the latter today, which is actually located in the province of Samut Prakan. Grab is always my choice for transport to the airports in Bangkok, and a normal car will run you around 400 baht, with a premium car coming in around 700 baht with tolls. As we're about to head into the terminal, let me quickly welcome you to the channel. My name is Kevin, and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises. I paid for this trip out of pocket, and the price that I paid is in the description below. Viet Travel had no knowledge that I'd be filming today, and I didn't receive any compensation from them. Everything in this video is my personal opinion based on my unique experience. The rest, I'll let speak for itself. Let's head inside. I arrived at the airport 2 hours and 45 minutes beforehand, and in retrospect, I wish I gave myself more time today. It seems nothing at Viet Travel is easy and straightforward. Suwanapum's primary terminal, where we are now, is one of the world's largest airport terminals, with seven concourses, one for each of the arms, so to speak, plus the center as the seventh. They also recently opened the satellite terminal. At this very moment, it's probably a bit overkill, but once everything is back to pre-COVID numbers, it will be greatly appreciated. After all, Bangkok is the most visited city on Earth. I found my check-in counter and had to check three times to make sure I was in the right place because I just couldn't believe how long the line was and there was no signage outside of the stanchions itself. I was in this line for a solid hour, but that's okay because it gives me plenty of time to explain to you exactly why I was in this line for an hour. As one does, I was watching everyone check in and just wondering why the line moved so slow. It seemed like there were plenty of counters open for a single flight on a narrow-body airplane. I was having flashbacks to COVID travel days since the check-in agent seemed to keep having to explain something to each passenger checking in, but I didn't know what. Long before they had an airline, Viet Travel has been one of the largest travel agencies in Vietnam, and they've always attracted many first-time travelers, but this was a bit more than that. When I finally got to the counter, I figured it out. They were trying, quite successfully, to get just about every single passenger to sign a limited release for their check-in baggage. Limited releases are when the airline asks you to sign your name on the inside of the baggage tag, and it's used for a variety of reasons. The most common that I've experienced is if you ask for a fragile sticker. Ironically, in that case, you waive your right to claim damage. Also, if you have a wonky looking package, you'd probably also need to sign. But I had a little 13 kilo bag, all neatly bundled up. They asked me to sign as well. I asked why I needed to sign. They pointed to my bag as if that explained things and then asked me to sign again. I refused and asked for what reason. The supervisor came over with a policy on her phone, I assumed from Viet Travel, and she pointed to the section that noted that they are not liable for baggage that is already damaged. She then pointed to the lock on my bag and essentially said, if your bag needs a lock, your zipper is broken. Um, no. I refused to sign and a few moments later, they gave up, reprinted the baggage tag and issued my boarding pass. I'll note that I was 100% within line here. I pre-booked 15 kilos of baggage, wasn't trying to carry it on, everything was normal. Only after passing through security when I was in line for immigration did I see that they still marked my bag as limited release. I don't know what kind of scam they think that they're trying to play here, and I don't know if it's isolated to this outstation, but I can tell you for sure I've traveled from Bangkok many, many times, and I've never had a problem like this in Thailand. So I put this fully on Viet Travel. 
If you can believe it, by the time I got through and done with everything, I didn't have time to go to a lounge. I know. The horror. Here's our aircraft for today pulling up. She's a 9-year-old A321-200, which was originally delivered to Air Berlin in 2014. So who is Viet Travel? Well, they're a small airline that just began commercial operations in November of 2021. They were meant to have eight aircraft by the end of 2022, but they still just have four, with two more on order. I knew they were a small airline, but I didn't really understand that they were that small. Their website features a variety of destinations across Vietnam and East Asia, but most of those are charter flights, which are used only for Viet travel tours. As for commercial flights, they have a very small operation. Currently, they fly to just five destinations in Vietnam, plus Bangkok. I've mentioned in the past that I generally don't hold a small delay against an airline unless it's a regular occurrence. I think the last time I used this logic was when flying to Fiji. Well, Viet Travel has redefined regular occurrence in this case. I was apparently extremely lucky with my 16 minute delay because as of writing this script in the middle of January, every single flight since November 1st has had a significant delay, averaging out to 78 minutes per day over the past 45 flights. For a flight that usually only takes 65 to 70 minutes, that's ridiculous. For boarding, there was no rhyme or reason, just a general call for all passengers. They have lots of nice things to say about themselves on their website, though. Quote, Viet Travel Airlines is ranked by Skytrax as one of the top five best travel experience airlines in the world. The airline has also won the Leading New Airline in Asia Award from the World Travel Awards 2022 and the Inspirational Brand Award International Award from Asia Pacific Enterprise Awards 2022. This sounds like quite the airline. In addition to all of this, they note, quote, in addition to providing passengers with enjoyable experiences on flights, such as having an in-flight storyteller who shares information about the next destination, we also offer water and snacks with local tastes, unquote. Thai milk tea, maybe? Mango sticky rice? Tom Yum chips? Stepping on board, it's a very standard layout for a low-cost carrier in Asia. Super slimline seats, the same used by Air Berlin, with 29 inches of pitch. I have to be honest though, if this is 29 inches of pitch, then someone needs to tell Singapore Airlines this is what 29 inches of pitch looks like. Because you'll see in my next report, that on Singapore Airlines A350 in economy, I had less knee room than this. Very strange. Three other things that I noticed. The plane was half full, which really boggles my mind how check-in took so long. I fully understand that my bag was well over the seven kilos to carry on, but what's the point of all the check-in hassle if the overhead bins are literally empty? Third, and this is the part that really turned me off. On my flight, there were two Viet travel tour guides. It's very common for Vietnamese travel companies to send guides with groups to their other locations. You'll see it on every domestic and regional flight. But in today's case, it seemed like the tour guides were the ones in charge of the cabin. They were moving people around, standing in the aisles while taxiing, and were just generally unpleasant towards the flight attendants who otherwise seemed nice enough. Definitely not the storytellers that I was expecting. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help and support the channel. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. It is a beautifully clear day today. That's the satellite terminal in the distance. Perfect kind of weather for a nice takeoff. Sit back and relax. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up next.
A well-placed coat hook helped me out with my power bank, and we were on our way to the southeast. And I began to explore their onboard magazine, which is the only in-flight entertainment. But of course, for an LCC, that's the norm. Then that famous drink and snack service started. The choices today were water or apple juice. No snacks, nada más. I will say that I seem to be lucky lately because my flights that seem to be short on content always have beautiful approaches. So at least today we can have some stunning views of the Mekong River Delta below as we began quite a strange pattern approaching Saigon. So two things to wrap this up. First, I already didn't really have any respect for Skytrax, so I suppose my respect a meter is now in negative territory with them. Secondly, I feel like Viet Travel doesn't actually understand what it means to compete in a cutthroat market. I chose them for the novelty of trying a new airline. For everyone else though that doesn't give a crap about what airline they're on, if you're not on a Viet Travel tour, what on earth is the benefit of flying on Viet Travel? At least on Vietjet, I can buy a snack or a meal. On Vietnam Airlines, bags are included. On Thai Airways, you get a full meal. All of these options are essentially the same price. Bamboo tried to sell a story of being a hybrid airline, but they really didn't deliver on that and now they're hanging on by a thread. Viet Travel, unless they can find their niche for commercial flights and quickly, is going to go nowhere very fast. We landed in an off and on rainy day in Ho Chi Minh City at what was the actual furthest parking bay from the terminal. All of the working going on on the right hand side behind the green fence is the new Terminal 3 construction. Sometimes the bulkhead seats on low-cost carriers are horribly tight, but not on this aircraft. It does look like she'd do well with a long extended downpour. I think it's pretty clear already, but no, you should not choose Viet Travel on your next flight between Bangkok and Saigon. Literally any other option, uh, I guess besides swimming, is a better choice. All of that said, 
I do hope that this video today was helpful and mildly entertaining. If it was, please click that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on my twice weekly uploads. I'll see you next time on board Singapore Airlines on one of their A350s in economy. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.